Hello. So I've had this idea for a sort of a journal spread that I think is quite cool. And the idea is that I'm going to use my fingerprint in some way to create some kind of journaling lines that I can use to add in the things that make me me, things that I think are really special about me, things that I think are really good about me, qualities, all kinds of things, whatever words come to mind. And the reason I feel like this is a good thing for me to do at the moment is because I've noticed that if somebody were to ask me to tell them like three good things about myself and three things that I'm good at, sometimes, some days, I'd have to really think about that. And I know that for all of us, there are good things about us, but sometimes we kind of lose our focus on them. And I think it might be a really good thing for me to focus on that. And I've recently been playing a lot with masking fluid. And I've got this, it's called a mask pen. It has masking fluid in here, and then it has this really fine tip. Now the fine tip has a kind of a, a pin in it to stop it getting blocked. So I'm going to use that to create the shape. I could use a light box and actually transfer my fingerprint, but I'm just going to use my fingerprint, the shapes that I've got as inspiration. And the way I've got my fingerprint so big is that I've used an ink pad, a black ink pad, a stays on one that dries really fast, printed onto a piece of paper. I use my phone to take a photo, and then I've printed that out as big as I could, just so that I can see what's going on there. And so I'm going to try now and draw the lines ready for that, because it needs to dry at least overnight for about 12 hours. So I'm going to have a little bit of a, a play and a look. I'm going to move my fingerprint so that I can see it easily when I'm kind of looking up at it, I think. Um, there's a good spot. Oh, actually, there's OK. And so I'm going to just start with this kind of curvy shape. And it's like inspired by my fingerprint. It's not going to be exactly like it, so I'm just going to use some of the shapes that I can see there. So, you can see you get this lovely fine line, and you don't have to squeeze. It's just gravity kind of doing its work. I'm also going to add in a kind of curvy shape there, and I like the idea of having kind of even though I don't have one, a kind of circly, overly kind of shape over here. I'm just basically going to go for filling these lines in. Some of them might be closed. I think I'm going to actually put one here as well because I, I quite like them. I think it's because they remind me of spirals. And. You could use the contour lines from a favourite place as well. You know, you get on those, um, you get ordnance survey maps there. You can see them, but you can also, I would imagine, get to them online and buy like a square of them or just one certain area. That might be really quite fun. And to kind of write your observations about a place and your thoughts about a place and the things that you can see. Pop them in one of those. Kind of circles. It reminds me of wood as well. I mean, that'd be really interesting, wouldn't it, to kind of look at the grain of trees and write what trees are about. If you hear some clacking, I'm really sorry. It's my dog Watson. He can't seem to settle at the moment, and he's kind of trying various places. He's just gone over to his bed to see if that's any better than where he was. I think it's because Sherlock has snuck his spot which is normally right by my feet when I'm doing art um, but Sherlock's kind of beat him to it now if you've not used masking fluid before then I would really suggest having a little play on some small cards I've got um, a class that's all about kind of layers in the mind for watercolours kind of classes that I'm doing and it's called Layers and Lines. It's one that I did for March 2020. And week one kind of shows you 
different kinds of ways to apply masking fluid and we play around with creating layers and lines and they would be an awesome way to do abstract landscapes it's something that's just come up in the, the Facebook group which is an awesome idea and one of the really fab creatives in there has created some really well they're all creating some really fab things but this came up in a conversation we were having about what she'd created and what it reminded her of but it, it shows you kind of a basic introduction and it's definitely worth having a play with whatever you're using on some scrap paper first to get a feel for how fine a line you can get how how much pressure you need to use, how much you need to load up, how easy it is to get it to come off your paper, all those kinds of things that will really kind of make a, a difference. I'm just having another look here and I can see there are broken lines. I don't necessarily want to put broken lines in. But I do like putting in these little kind of shapes. Like I said, it's inspired by the idea of my fingerprint, not necessarily a, a replica of it. If I wanted to do a replica, I would either have traced it, but most likely I would have just put a light box underneath it. If you don't have a light box, there are a couple of apps that you can get for iPads that you can use. And I think as long as you've got a decent screen protector on your iPad, that would work really well. I wouldn't like to use it without a screen protector, something like a glass, because if you press too hard you could damage your screen. But if you've got that, and you have a little look on um, the App Store. If you've got a tablet, I'm sure there are Android versions. I can't remember the name of them, but they're very easy to find with some uh, Googling. Any second now, I think my husband is going to come walking into the living room. I'm really hoping... I get this done before he does so that I don't have to figure out how to edit out that particular noise. The last little bit here. Okay, so some of the last kind of bits now. I'm just making sure that I'm kind of following around these shapes a little bit. It's just quite loose and flowy. I'm just going to have a check and see if there's anywhere where I think I want a bit more masking fluid or if I've got any bits where I feel like I want to add. Now I did test it out on a, a card and these thin lines do, you know, they really do rub off. I, was, I thought, oh, they'll, you know, they'll never... I'll never resist or they'll just won't come off but they do really well but I am adding some extra little bits in just I don't know just wherever I feel like it I suppose um, I filled this up with Pabio, um drawing gum I think it is and it seems to lift off really nicely uh, and was quite good value so I think that is probably it now one or two thicker bits in just because I think it adds some interest to have some of the thicker bits of masking fluid because obviously where the masking fluid is is going to stay white because we're going to paint on top of this um, and actually I'll be honest I do find doing this quite mindful um, I'm finding actually more and more that Whenever I'm coming to art, I'm slipping into a very mindful kind of mindset, I suppose. There's Watson again. He's flopping on the floor now. That means I kind of, kind of, uh, um, it's a habit, I suppose, that I've built. That I do become quite present, and I'm, I'm much more. I don't know, tolerant with myself, forgiving uh, that idea of approaching with curiosity and being discerning rather than judgmental seems to really have taken so that even when things don't go how I'd imagined or 
the end result isn't something that I absolutely love or adore or think is um, really meets my idea of what's beautiful um, for me and for my eyes. I'm kind of much more okay with that than I used to be, which I, I'm finding is really quite a lovely thing that I, I am much more okay with making something that might look a bit like mud or mess or you know isn't this polished outcome or isn't what I had in mind and just kind of learning from it and still having enjoyed the process and I'm really liking that I'm, I'm finding that to be a really great thing so I didn't sit down I didn't do anything in particular I, to start this I just sat in my chair put my feet on the floor took a couple of breaths and I was kind of there you will be on a different kind of part of your journey into incorporating mindfulness into your art creation so I will include a little video that shows you one of the ways that I do begin um, with a relaxation exercise just a short one that I use when I've got the need to kind of just really put myself into the right frame of mind so do use that before you start now this the masking fluid bit needs to dry it probably will be dry enough in a few hours you can't speed it up with a heat gun because obviously this is kind of plasticky and I I, I find that it kind of it just the basking fluid doesn't work right or it melts or does weird stuff so I'm going to leave this overnight I like to leave masking fluid for a good 12 hours if I can so I know it's completely dry you can see I've got some bits that are quite thick so those need to be dry through before I put the paint on um, and so I shall leave this and I will see you tomorrow when we'll go on to our next step No. So this is all totally dry now. To be a little bit careful when you're touching it because you could easily rub it off. What I want to do now is just do some wet in wet over the top of it. So I've got a number eight brush, my paint. I do have a mixing palette if I want one. Um, it's just off to the side there. And I'm just going to take some colours that I like. That's basically what it amounts to no particular plan um, I am going to think about making sure I don't put colours that are um, going to make brown colours next to each other unless I want to and I'm just you know gently a bit of water and I'm going to put some different colours on making sure the edge doesn't dry at this point I like that kind of blue and then this and more turquoisey blue is quite fun. I quite like blues. Oops, I don't think. And um, so I'm trying out a, a few of them. Maybe some cobalt teal light, that's quite nice. And then I might pop into some kind of a purple. It's a kind of somewhere between a cool and a warm, I think, this one. It's like a maroon kind of colour or a plum, which I quite like. You can see I'm just kind of adding it along the working edge where it's wet. And then I'm washing my brush off and going in. This is just plain water now to kind of get it to blend. And so we're actually putting wet paint into the wet area and then a little bit of just plain water and you can see how when you put the water on it follows this now again I sat down before I kind of started doing this and I did a little bit of a breathing exercise to get me in the right kind of frame well I'm not loving that one so I'm going to just change that out for something different something pinker I think um, I'll try that. I think what I'm looking for is something like a magenta. That's a little bit too red. And a little bit of a mooch, I think. That might be the kind of colour I'm looking at. Yeah, that's, that's a bit more like it. I'm just going to add some of that just along this edge here, like that. I don't want any kind of hard lines and I want the colours to kind of mix and really mingle. 
I'm actually going to do some more um, things to it, I'm just trying to get some colour into all of the spaces at the moment. I really like yellow, so along here with the pink I'm going to put some yellow, and I quite like warm yellows, and I like transparent yellow, but I'm going to try kind of a warm yellow first. Now, you can see that it's quite strong and it would be really easy to get a line so I'm just using plain water and then putting some more yellow pigment on here I'm going to slip a piece of paper underneath just to be able to get right into that edge let's pull the colour down I'm quite, I'm quite liking that I just want to put a bit more of that pink along here just to help it kind of go from one to the other a bit more smoothly just plain water again some more of the pink just got an eye out now for any places where there might be white gaps and I put some more of that lovely kind of plummy maroony colour in because I quite like that and I'm going to go back and grab a little bit more of the blues pop some of that in and just bring it down a little bit just to add some variety and a little bit more of that turquoise maybe because I really like that and now it's just a case of I'm looking for any white gaps making sure I've got paint everywhere I want to have the paint and then here on this bit I am pulling that pink down a little bit more so it's just a little bit of yellow in that corner I want to add some more pink to that and you can see where the masking fluid was we've not got um, any paint sticking to it it's resisting that's it's that's what it does so just going in there and touching anywhere that I think has still got white paper left it's going on my edges a little bit it's obviously easy to miss one along there just to make sure we go and now what I'm going to do I think I quite like the idea of doing some splatters I really like splattering so I'm going to grab um, I think I'm going to grab a little bit of the yellow don't know how that's going to work but I'm going to try so I've got some yellow on my brush I'm just going to tap now I've got another page here so I'm quite a messy splatter so something on the top is probably a good idea and just put more of that yellow I quite like how that looks gold would work really nicely as well I think and silver in fact lots of metallics would look lovely you need to do it while it's wet to get it to mix I want to do the same with one of the blues that I used that's quite quite strong and fun and then I'm going to go in and do the same with the pink so I'm kind of just, now I've got the paint on, I'm playing around with creating some fun, different bits of texture. I'll go in and grab a little bit of that purple. I'm trying to do each one a little bit. So I'm getting lots of different colour variations. This bit here doesn't seem to be getting much splatter, so I'm just going to hold that down. I'm just tapping. I tend to splatter by tapping my brush, and I tend to use two hands when I'm doing it. But you can do it one-handed. Now remember watercolour is going to dry paler, so this is probably going to dry a lot paler. Now I've got some plain water on my brush, and I'm just splattering that on, because sometimes it can make some fun patterns, and it's going to get kind of trapped between the masking fluid and kind of flow, so that might be interesting. Obviously up here I'm going to get some greens forming, and down here I've got some pinks. I'm just going to add a little bit more pink here, like that. And I'll add a little bit of the purple here. I don't love where I've got browns happening, like here, but I don't really dislike it either. So I'm just kind of working on some of those areas a little bit and adding some more colour back in. So it's just a case of having a play until I get to a stage where I'm kind of liking what there is. No, no big plan. 
just some fun. One of the good things of having all three primaries is I could get some fun muted kind of tones coming up. I'm just using plain water now and I'm blending away some of those kind of splatters and seeing what I get. I'm going to add in some more of that lovely plummy purple that I really like here, maybe here, and a little bit of the pink just to kind of burst of it a couple of places and then I'm going to need some more of that blue that I started with. Now this is quite intense at the moment but I'm kind of liking that. I think maybe the yellow was not a good pick so if I were to do it again I probably wouldn't include the yellow because then I'd probably have quite liked the way the splatters work together. Having the yellow in there meant I got browns that I didn't really want. I'm just going back and adding in some pinky splatters some little bits of blue so these are colours that if I mix in pink and blue I'm going to end up with pinks and blues um, and various shades of, of those kind of colours so they should work well together because there's actually no yellow in the mix, there's no orange, there's no yellow there's nothing that it can kind of create those with them. Wanting something a bit lighter in there and I'm not really sure what at the moment so I'm having a little bit of a ponder it's just that that bit's quite dark I'm really liking the way some of this is working now I'm also thinking that if I want to write on this I'm going to need something that is going to be either dark enough that a light colour would show up or light enough that a dark colour would show up so I'm having a little bit of a look and kind of seeing big pools of colour here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my tissue to just lift some of that colour back now see how it's kind of got a little bit paler and by using the tissue kind of scrunched up you leave a little bit of fun texture behind you I'm just going to do that anywhere where I'm seeing big pools of water really just to move it back a little bit so that I'm not not too dark because I want to have the option of of writing maybe in um, a grey pen on it. This is just again where my eye is going and I'm just dotting my paper. I'm kind of quite liking that as it is. I think what I'd like is a little bit more of this kind of turquoise colour somewhere else because it seems to be only in that one area. I'm just going to pop a little bit here and a little bit here I think like that and just blend it out just a little bit maybe pop a little bit of the pink next to it because that seems to be a really nice combo this is like a magenta -y kind of colour and this is um, quite turquoisey tealy like a little bit here as well Hmm, maybe a little splodge like of this. Okay, I'm kind of, I'm dark, can it back up again and then I might lighten it until I've got a kind of something that I like. Just going to scrunch my tissue up like that and just, just touch it. It is literally just touching. I'm happy with that, I'm going to stop now. I like how that's looking. So this now has to completely dry. Now, because it's got masking fluid on, I can't speed that up with the heat gun. So this is a great thing to do in little steps um, up to kind of around this point until the masking fluid comes off because you need to leave it to have a good dry between each of these steps. So when you don't have a huge amount of time but you want to leave something ready or you're working on something like this, this is quite a fun technique to use, I think. Um... I think it could be a really fun one to just record how you're feeling each day and just add a little bit each day once the page is finished. But for now, we've got to leave that to dry. So I will see you in a little bit when it has completely dried. So this is all completely dry now and I'm ready for my next step. 
I've got a couple of ideas that I'm thinking of, but one of the things that I really quite want to do is to write inside these kind of lines that are representative of my fingerprints. Now I've got a couple of different sorts of pens. One's a light grey and one's a dark grey. And I think I'm going to need the 0.1 rather than the 0.5. These are Unipin fine liners and they're waterproof. And there's a pale grey and a dark grey. I'm not sure which one's going to show up. So I'm just, the pearlies as you can see, really quite pale. And I'm, I'm thinking of what words might I use to describe me, what's uniquely me. And I guess creative is one of those. I'm just going to let that die, dry. It's very pale. And I'm just going to try and see what the darker pen looks like. quite like the darker pen I think so that's the one I'm going to use. So that decision made, I want to have a little bit of a think about words that might be used to describe me, how might I describe me, what might words come to mind instantly and so I'm literally just going to write myself out a list so Now, what I seem to have fallen into doing is uh, essentially um, writing what is a kenning, um, which is a kind of Viking poetry, which um, has uh, this kind of format, a crystal holder, herb sniffer, cheese eater. Theirs tended to be more about swords and, and things like that. Um, but that's fine, I'm, I'm okay with that. But I can put just words too. I don't know how I put that one on ideas person. I kind of um I tend to have lots of ideas. Following them through is a different thing, but I do I'm good at coming up with lots of different options and what you could do or might do, what things might mean. Um I'm, I think there's a, a weird dichotomy in me that's coming up in my head. I'm actually possibly quite a private person, but I'm also very open. I'm not, you know, somebody who doesn't talk about certain things or a subject's off limits. Um, but I tend to perhaps reserve some of my deeper thoughts for people that I feel most comfortable with. I love deep late night conversations and blue and stargazing so this has become things I like to do and things that remind me of me as well and I'm just I'm just writing whatever comes to mind for me um, I like learning things I like being, I enjoy being a learner, I enjoy learning new things Um, I think I'm quite friendly, very trusting, I've been told that I'm quite naive sometimes, um, but I prefer trusting. Um, I think I like to help, I think I can be, sometimes I can be a perfectionist. 
I'm not sure, I don't think of that as actually a particularly positive quality in some ways um, because it's something that can make it hard for me to appreciate the good bits, the successes and sometimes in trying to get things exactly right you end up not doing it so I actually try really hard not to be that too much at the moment um, a Taurian, I am a very typical Taurian I think I'm quite earthy and love my home and the comfort of having a place that's home is is very much important to me as is food um, I think that's pretty important to me as is this one um, so I've got a few to get me going and um, were the people around me I might ask them for some words they might use to describe me if I was feeling brave um, and and I might do that to get some more words for this but that's that's enough to get me started I think so this is kind of about what makes me me what makes me unique so I could write it in sentences or I could write single words So I've got creative and a creator there. What I'm then going to do is obviously I'm going to want to add some patterns and things to these as well. So I'm just putting in some little lines just to break up where the words and things are going to be. So I'm actually going to fill this with marks. And it's kind of a way to celebrate the things that make me unique, that are good about me and that are you know I'm quite okay with celebrating some of my more shadowy qualities like um, I can be very stubborn but I actually think that's quite a positive thing sometimes so that's very much me so I quite like just these downward lines, so I'm going to put those in for now, at this point. I like the kind of detail that they're starting to add to this. Now I haven't taken the masking fluid off, because it's going to help me hopefully not get pen on the lines. There are some places where it feels like it's kind of come a little bit off the page, like here, it looks very white. So I'm just taking a little bit more care there in case the masking fluid has already kind of come off with um, with being painted on or I didn't get it on thickly enough because you know that happens. And so I'm just picking spaces to add some of these things, these words and phrases and maybe sentences in. put it in all of them, I might not put patterns in all of them, I might go in with a Posca pen, I might go in with some white pen, but this is my first step and I'm really kind of sinking into that not judging myself in putting in these words and it's a, it's kind of um, an interesting exercise for me because like I said I found that I was starting to struggle to think about what was good about me and what I thought was good about me so that's part of what this exercise is for me there we go, that one's gone all the way around so this one um, I 
really like the number three, so I might start putting some things on here. Three times. I have three sons as well, so I feel this drawing to put mum on three times. Because that's how many times I've been a mum, I suppose. I don't know. Could be. I'm not going to overthink it. Not at this point. So you can see how this is going to start to build up, but it is going to take some time. And I'm just literally popping it where I feel like. No, no massive plan or anything like that. No fussing with the handwriting either. It's my ordinary scroll. I'm not doing any particular font or anything like that. Now this bit where I'm getting to here, because it kind of gets a bigger gap, I'm just stretching the lines over so that then they can come back together over here. I'm going to go for Feather Collector next. Will you record them? Mm-hmm. Do you need me to shut up for a second so you can finish that bit? Mm-hmm. I get Collector in here. those marks finished off. So this is something I can keep adding to if I want to or I can sit and do it all in one go. So I'm going to keep doing some of this and I'm probably going to speed it up and um, add some music on so that I've got all the words on there and then I can start thinking about what I'm going to do next. <laughs> So I finished kind of putting the words on that I wanted to, um, so I'm just going to pop those out of the way. And now I'm kind of thinking about where I go next and what I do next. And I'm thinking about including some symbols and patterns and numbers, all those kind of things that are important to me. And for me, I mean, there are things that I instantly think of, like the number three, um, three dots that had a special meaning for me and my husband when we were very much younger. Um, and still does, I suppose. Uh, this Celtic symbol called a triquetra, I think, that is normally a bit more even. Um, spirals, circles, just generally circles. I've got a thing about circles. Um, and then there's a pattern that goes like this that I really like, that I think would fit. So it's kind of three downward dashes three horizontal dashes and then when you do if you do it underneath you do the opposite it makes like a, a woven feel to it pointillism I really quite like where you use dots like this so that and so those are quite close together and then if you space them out you can create almost a shading effect So these are the things that I've got in my head. You might want to stop and just have a little think and jot down some of the things, the symbols that might be important to you. Um, 
and I'm going to incorporate some of those into here. So, kind of thinking about that, I'm also thinking, do I want to keep working in this grey pen, which I do quite like? And I think I probably do, but I'm also thinking that I have some aqua lip pens, a, a, a Sakura pens that kind of glaze on the top that might be really quite interesting. And I'm thinking that those colours would be the ones that I would go for using out of that. Um, that I want colours that tone rather than that stand out massively. Then another thing that I might choose to include would be some white. So I'm grabbing a selection of white pens. So I've got a Signo Uni Ball, um, I've got a Sakura Jerry, Jelly Roll, a couple of um, Posca pens, and somewhere else in here I've got a, a Signo. 07 uni ball. It's different to this one. This is the broad, I think. This tends to give me really good white. I don't know what this one will be like. So I've got those. Um, I'm not going to use black at this point, I don't think, because I think it will be too dominant and I don't want to do too much pushing and pulling. So I've grabbed those. I've also got some coloured Posca pens, which I'm going to grab the finer pink and purple from. And I've got some Derwent Graphics pens. I really love these pens, but I am finding that when I'm using them, they are leaving kind of um, splodges of um, paint. They're kind of oozing, if you like. So I'm going to be a bit careful with those in that I don't really want to have a big splodge. So I may or may not use them on this. Some pieces are very forgiving if you make a splodge and it, you know, it's not going to bother me. I feel like on this, if I got a splodge, it would really draw the eye because it's quite delicate. I'm grabbing a couple of tissues. Um, I've got my pot of water next to me. And I think I'm kind of ready to get going and have a go. So, let's just get those pens laid out so that I can have them in front of me and see them all. I'm sorry you can't see them all, just so that I know what I'm kind of grabbing from. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit onto an area so you can see more what I'm doing. I think that that, that kind of is nicely zoomed in, I think. So I'm going to grab, <clears throat> kind of work in here, I'm going to grab this purple glaze pen. And I am going to start off with just, I think, just some dots to see how they look in this colour. Now, one of the things that I tend to do, they're quite dark, but that's okay. One of the things I tend to do is if I do a pattern in one place, I repeat it in a couple of other places. that helps to bring it together so because I've done these purple dots in one place they fit some lines here so I'm just going to go the other side of them now I need to zoom out so that you can see that I think you can see that I'm kind of going down here now just doing that dot again so it's just dots so I'm going to repeat that somewhere else so I might put some up here on this dark blue I think they'll work quite nicely and you can see if I pull this down you can see they're a slightly different kind of colour there okay I'm just going to zoom out so you can see the whole page again and I'm going to put those dots in another place and I'm just looking to kind of decide where I could go for here I could go for kind of in this loop I think probably this loop is going to be good for me so just basically just little dots and I've got a word there so I'm just going to go around that and the other thing I've got is a little bit across here I'm just going to put the dots in that too so that's those done now these can smudge so I know I need to be careful with them um, where I put my hand for them because while they're wet they are really quite smudgy. So this is the pink Sakura glaze pen. Now for this one I'm thinking that I might do something like some spirals in one of the 
bigger gaps I've got a couple bigger gaps there's a biggish looking gap here there's quite a big gap kind of here uh, and there's a biggish gap over here so I'm going to have a go I'm going to start with this bit here because it's it's quite pink so I'll get a feel for how it works on pink just zoom in a little bit so that you can see that a little bit better so just a really basic kind of spiral shape and I'm getting them to touch now I find the edges of Sakura pens they're quite broad, it's hard to get a fine line, which is why I think I need a big gap. I am kind of thinking that if I don't like it, I have absolutely no problem with filling in this space and just colouring it the pink and making it a darker area. And in all honesty, that's what I think I'm going to do, because I'm, I'm just not loving those marks. They're, they're not quite fine enough for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to colour this in and create a darker area of pink. And I can just repeat that in another place, another few places. And they don't all have to be wide, they can be narrower. So don't ever feel you've just got to stick to what you've done. You know, if you're feeling you don't like it, that's absolutely fab. You know, knowing what we like and what we don't like as creators, as artists, is really, really important. If you don't like something, the key is not to leap into judging yourself, oh I've made a terrible mistake, oh it's a disaster, we don't need that kind of thinking, what we need is okay I don't like that, is there anything I can do to change it? And in this case yes, happily there was, I could just colour, and now I'm just going to add that to some different places on this piece, so that it doesn't look odd and on its own, and it also means that when I take the masking fluid off, I'm going to have some interesting darker areas that quite that I could quite um, imagine. Sorry, my words aren't coming out because I'm getting concentrated. I could quite imagine will look quite striking against the paler areas. So, just choosing some places where I can add that in. I'm kind of feeling I want to put it in here, but I'm just looking carefully to find. Um, oh, there! I stuck my hand in it. Do that such a lot when I'm using these. Um, a space where I can definitely go all the way along. I think this one will be quite fun. And as long as my masking fluid is still there, then even if I draw over them with these pens, you know. It's, it's going to resist it. Um, the pen isn't going to sink through it. I'm trying to keep roughly within the masking lines, but it's okay if I go a little bit onto them. I don't have to be super, super neat. So, as I'm looking at it, I'm seeing the hole, and I can see I probably need to put some of this glazed pink up in some other areas. So I'm going to just zoom out so that you can see that too. Pull this down. A little bit for you and you can see because it's concentrated down here I need to work some in kind of up here and over here so they they don't look too isolated I'm gonna go for this here so I quite like the idea of emphasizing the kind of um, circle type shapes in here and I'm gonna go for this little bit here I'm gonna turn my book a little bit because otherwise I'm gonna end up putting my hand in the the pen that's drying. This is this is where I miss my heat gun because normally if I didn't have masking fluid on my page I'd just give it a nice blast with the heat gun and that would be that. I'm going to do here as well. Again there's no, it's just where my eye is going, where my intuition is suggested that I should put these. There's not a plan, there's not a, a thought out anything other than I know I need to repeat it in a few places so that it kind of works as part of the look of the page overall. And then I think that little bit there quite into doing. Now, my brain's thinking do I want a long one that goes here and all the way across? Maybe, maybe. Let's have a look and see what's available. 
goes into line so that one wouldn't work for me. Hmm, I think maybe not, but I will do this little bit here that's kind of contained. So I've got something in this area. There we go, like that. So I've got some in some places. Um, I'm adding a little bit down here. It's, in, it's important to kind of get it in enough places, but also not to overdo it so it becomes the dominant design, I suppose, to get to, for it to feel balanced. And that's what I'm going for, is just so that my eye isn't drawn to one, but kind of moves around. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So in terms of those spirals, I think I'm going to use the grey fine liner pen for those, because that is the finest tip I've got. So I'm going to come back to those spirals now and pop those in. And I'm thinking maybe this space here would work for me. Let's just zoom into that. Let's look over a little bit. And grab the fine liner and probably zoom in a little bit more. Just a little bit of squiggling with the book so you can see the bit where I'm working. Right, okay. So I'm starting here. I'm taking care not to put my hands onto the glaze pens at the moment. And I am just doing spirals. Now they're very, very pale but they add a kind of lovely detail. And the thing I love about spirals and doing things like this is that it's this lovely repeated kind of pattern and you can spiral in and you can spiral out. Now I'm spiraling in because it helps me to have lots of control about how big my spirals are and that they're touching. And I just like the feeling of them, so I'm really enjoying that feeling of drawing them and being really present with that and that's one of the keys to me of kind of creating mindfully is really being present with what you're creating but equally I know that sometimes if my mind is quite loose and flowy whilst I'm creating on this there's another layer to it that kind of means that my intuition, my kind of subconscious if you like, sends me nudges, images, colours, ideas just because my brain is kind of letting it be and not having lots of thinking, ah oh, that's a bit of masking tape there, masking pen that's come off and I'm just trying to work with it carefully. And this bit is quite narrow so here, really quite narrow. So basically what I'm going to do is go all the way around this shape with my spirals. Like this. Okay, and I'm just moving my book so that you can see where I am and where I'm going. trying to make them as wide as the line and to touch each other if I can. This bit's a little bit better because the masking fluid is still firmly on the paper. So if I do go a little bit too far it's not going to go into my white kind of edge when I take the masking fluid off. And there's my last little one. I'm sorry if little bits of that went off camera, but you certainly got the idea of exactly what I was doing. So really, when you zoom out, it's quite hard to see that. But for me, sitting in front of it here, I can see it's created a darker area and it's created an interesting pattern. So I'm just going to repeat that in a couple of places on the page. So I'm thinking that actually kind of somewhere up here might be quite fun. So I'm going to go for this one. I'm just checking how dry these bits are because they dry quite shiny which is fun. Right. I 
think they're all mostly dryish. So I'm okay to put my arm on them. These are really tiny. There we go. Oh, so tiny. And then there's a little bit of a white bit of paper there. So just going over that. And just, you know, really, whatever symbols, whatever patterns you've chosen as ones that you really like. Because remember, this is the whole point of this is to reflect. The, the things we know about ourselves, the things that we love, it's it's based on our fingerprint, it's got words that we think describe us and maybe words that other people have said describe us and now we're adding a second kind of, but a third or even fourth if you consider the colours that we picked were ones that we were drawn to of patterns that we really enjoy and again the lovely thing with this is that you can just come to it each day and add a little bit as time allows and build it up. It doesn't all have to be done in one sitting. It doesn't have to be done this big. I actually did a small one when I was um, trying out the idea on a little card. That is perhaps that much of the page. Um, so quite a bit smaller. You could equally do it really big if you wanted to. So there's lots of possibilities. We also said we could adapt it, so rather than being our fingerprint, it might be the contour lines from a, a favourite place or an area of the world or country or anything like that. And then you could add in place names, you could add in some of your favourite things, you could add in words that describe your memories of that place. And equally, this being our fingerprint, if you want to go into these lines and you want to add a favourite quote or a description of a favourite memory or maybe... On one of my thumbs I've got a scar and if you'd use a fingerprint that had that scar or kind of a, an odd mark I don't, think, I don't know how well you can see it really it's kind of faded but when I did my fingerprint it came was a quite kind of solid little line that was missing like a gap you might want to put the story of that in you know follow your own nudges and your own intuition about what you need here so I've got some going across here I've got some going around here, I've got some here, and I feel like that's enough of those. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with, I think, a pink Posca pen. I really do love fluorescent pink. I used to hate pink, and now I really quite love it. And I think I'm just going to do some dots, probably, because these dots are standing out, so I think some more dots, but in a different colour, probably going to help them to feel a little bit less dominant but we shall see I might do other things as well in the pink I do love dots though has to be said I'm adding some pink dots for now also dots are quite nice because they get you to see how the colour is without being too um, firm or forceful so I quite like those pink dots but I also like the idea of pink lines so that's what I'm going for next and I may come back to putting some more pink dots somewhere else. But I do have dots already on this piece. So as a pattern, it will probably work. And they're not too um, in your face as dots. They're quite subtle. So they don't need as much balancing as those purple ones did. I quite like the pink lines. They're fun. Um, because you're getting a little bit more of a hit of pink. I'm thinking actually that this might be fun along here where I've got some smaller gaps and it kind of links in with that initial design we did with the words and then just lines after them so this bit actually comes back on itself here so that's a lot of pink lines. So I'll get up to there, which is where the word is. Do this bit here, and then I'm just going to work back here, popping the lines in.
and it's very easy to lose track of which um, layer you're on so I'm tracing them back quite carefully there we go so I've got some lovely pink lines I've got some pink dots I think I'll pop some more pink dots maybe uh, he here yeah, against the blue because they're going to really pop against the blue and then I am going to switch to I think a blue aqualip and I'm going to add some circles possibly they might be very dark let's have a look let's try it on a blue first to see I quite like this one, so that's fun. I'm just going to do some circles that touch and join. So I'm just going to zoom in so that you can see that a bit better. Okay, I'll pull my down a little bit. Zoom out a little bit because I'm getting trouble focusing. There we are. I'm just doing circles here. They're touching either side of the masking fluid and they're touching the one before. So uh, I've got a word there, so I'm just missing out that gap and continuing that along. They're quite fun. I think they're quite hard for you to see because it's quite reflective. Um, try it in another area. I think maybe I'm going to do something here. up really strongly for me on the paper um, I'm quite liking that they're quite bold but also I can feel that they could be quite dominant so I'm just having a little bit of a think about how I'm going to balance that out across the whole piece and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some circles that go all the way along here along this one but I'm also Probably going to do some solid blue coloured in bits like we did with the pink because I think that will help to balance the colour out that is kind of deeper than the other tones that I've got. So I've gone all the way along there, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out so we can see the whole page, and I'm going to go in and add some blue kind of solid lines using this blue acrylic pen so just going carefully as I can some some areas the masking fluids come off a little bit I think where I've lent on it sometimes it pulled a little and sometimes I've maybe not got it on thickly enough so I was using really thin lines so just if I can see that it looks a little bit whiter I'm taking a little bit of extra care. But I don't think it's going to make too big a difference, to be honest. No, that goes there. Okay. And this comes round to here. Now, if you don't have acrylic pens, you could easily use. Um, any kind of pen really I would think that's coloured gel pens would probably work um, you could use watercolour brush pens they would work I'm not going to do anything wet on the top of this so they won't be reactivated uh, I'm trying to see where this one goes I think that's kind of where it stops. I've added some in here. I feel like I need to get some over here somewhere and down here maybe. So I'm going to do a little bit here. I'm really looking forward to taking the mask and glue it off.
I want to get balance, and I want to, get, I want to try and include all my little patterny ideas if I can. And this is kind of like a little bit of um, it's a self care thing in a way for me. This one is it's it's me focusing on me, what makes me unique. What makes me me and appreciating those and putting effort into appreciating those in art it kind of sends a message to myself that I'm really worth the time and the effort to do this and to think about this and I'm kind of valuable and appreciated and all those kind of things uh, let's see definitely need something over here I'm actually thinking this might be good just here. Let's see how this bit works over here. do this one I do like the colour blue as well so I'm quite enjoying putting this in This one just there and then down here. I really like circles but I'm finding these are really drawing my eyes in a way that I'm not loving so I'm actually going to go over them in blue and what I think I'm finding out is that these aquilic pens on this particular piece are giving me too thick a line for me to enjoy the pattern uh, so I think what I'm going to do is stick with using something finer like that grey fine line out to do the patterns that are kind of more than just a dot or a dash. Yeah, I'm going to do the same here as well. They're just, they were just, I don't know, it's not working for me now. I've actually got a word there, so I'm going to go over it, and then if I can't see the word through, I'll maybe put that word on again. I've got two in this circle, and the blue's quite dark, so it might um, obscure them. Like that. I shall see when it's dry. I can still see the word through now, so I'm hoping. I'm hoping that when it's dry, I'll still be able to see it. So let me see what else have I got here that I wanted to try and use. thinking maybe I might go for something white and see how that looks right, let's see Posca pen and I'm going to go for lines I think so just literally straight straight lines between two of the mask included lines
quite fun. Let's pop that somewhere else. Um, here. I think this would be a really interesting one to add to every day with just the how you feeling just a sentence about how you're feeling every day just into the gaps and this one here here I feel like I need something in this kind of space so I'm actually going to do here because my grey dashes stop there so I'm going to carry them on with white if you notice your pen starting to kind of look a bit less white can be because the edge, the end has got a um, little bit of paint on it. So I'll just basically kind of show you. I'm just using my scrap piece of paper to do this and to pull until I'm getting a better line. Then I'll give it a good shake and then just get the paint to flood down again until I'm getting a nice solid white line and then carry on. Sometimes you just have to go with the fact that you're not getting brilliant, brilliant white and either go over it, I sometimes swap pen types or just you, it's okay, it doesn't have to be a brilliant, brilliant white for me to enjoy the marks on this. These are quite dominant because they're a little bit wider so I think I need some more wide patches of them. Soggy. This one I think is going to go all the way across, which is quite nice to have a, a pattern that goes all the way across the page. It seems to help to pull it together, I think. Go. Uh, go. You can see the whole page now. So I'm kind of thinking that I need something down here. You could use a dip pen and acrylic ink. That would be really fun to do this with, I think. And it would feel lovely. I've not chosen to use a dip pen because I'm using masking fluid. And I think I'd probably end up catching it, so that's one thing to bear in mind. Uh, where else do I feel like I need it? Here, up in this little corner. Yep, that's some nice white lines. I think I want to put some white dots in as well. I'm just getting the bigger Posca pen to do this so that I can have hopefully bigger dots just by pressing the tip of the pen down. And by sticking with some simple patterns that I'm repeating, it does help them to work together.
Mm, yes, I'm liking those. I'm going to pop back in with my grey fine liner and I'm going to add in some circles. I think because I do love circles. I'm going to look for some kind of areas I can put those in that are oops, a little bit smaller and maybe don't have ah, just spotted another one of those circles there so I just want to go over that and make it a solid blue I'm actually going to pop some circles here if I felt that these weren't showing up well enough I could use a black fine liner I'm quite happy with them being really subtle and kind of pale. I need some of those in there. I'm going to add some in here as well. And then I'm going to move over just a little bit to here. And I'm going to add some circles into here. You're going to go into those circles, and there's another circle in the middle. And so I'm going to keep doing that in some different places on the page. I'm choosing smaller, um, either gaps or kind of the length of the gap, so that they don't end up being very, very um, dominant. And there. I also don't have to do them along the whole line if I don't want to. I can just do them in a little patch. I think I'm going to pop some somewhere over here. I'm not sure where yet though. Probably here, I think. Keep going on there. And then I'm actually going to put the triquetra symbol in the middle of the circle spaces I've got. I'm not going to be too fussy about how I draw it. You know, just going to do the best that I can. Uh, I'm going to draw the top loop like that and then the bottom loops like that in this one. I'm just going to repeat that in the other middle spaces on the page. So I've added that symbol in because it's a symbol that I really love. Uh, but kind of how to play with the shape a little bit. Get it in. I may not get it into all of them, um, but I'll get into a few of these kind of central spaces. I might have to turn this one kind of more on its side. And here. There go. Um, so I've got my circles, my dots, my lines, I've got the spirals, I've got the triquetra symbols. Things I've got left now are the pattern of three dots, the number three, and um, the basket weaving that I could use. Now with the three I'm actually thinking if I turn it onto its side I can disguise it as that. It looks like a, a scalloped edge. You just zoom you in so you can see what I'm doing. So here it looks like um, either a scalloped edge or kind of like when you would do handwriting practice for cursive. Maybe it's why I like drawing scallops on things. They remind me of number threes on their side. Hmm, interesting. So I might pop that in a few other places just where I feel like there's a need for a pattern. So like say here, I feel like it needs something. So I'm just doing that kind of. And as I'm coming down this way, it's like I'm drawing a three ever so much. 
there we go so I'm going to put that in a few other places and then I'm going to see how I'm feeling about where we are then there we go so just looking for places where I feel like they need some pen work or to be a bit dark because that's essentially what this fine line does it just slightly adds shading or darkness to the area um, trying to spread it over different places very very soothing and very easy to just sink into making the patterns so if I go super quiet that's what's happened and you can see I'm not being super precious about getting everything exactly the same I'm enjoying how that just had a few interruptions which I will have cut out but it means I've forgotten really where I was so I'm just going to go back in and start doing these I find that I don't need to be fussy about you know whether they're all looking even or any particular way that's not it's quite loose really this is there we go I'm just having a look now to see if there are any bits that are kind of feeling like they are not patterned enough or any areas that feel like they might be too dark and what I'm going to do is I've got this very bright pink glaze pen and I'm really intrigued to see what it's like so I'm going to find a little area like say here I'm just going to see mm, that's quite fun I'm going to do I'm just going to colour in some blocks where there are little areas that I can use this one. I think the fun with these is that they still let the colour underneath show through. So I'm getting really interesting purples and pinks and things like that, which is really fun. Uh, so I'm just having a look where there are kind of gaps that don't have any patterns and I just still paint. I'm just adding a little bit of this in wherever I fancy really where there's a gap. There aren't actually that many gaps left now if I'm honest. I really want to get some somewhere up here I think. Uh, probably here. It's not going to show very pink though because that blue is quite strong. It's going to get kind of a lilac -y purple which is really quite beautiful. So again this is kind of observing with that sense of curiosity and fun and seeing what happens and what, what kind of colours are getting created. I really like that. I'm going to add a little bit here I think. I might add, I might add some lines with it just going along here because it's very similar to the Posca pen in its bright pink kind of tone and I think that might be good to add in some more of those just a bit concerned that that's white there so I think the mask include might have come off and that pink is very very bright so I don't want to have that in a white line so just a little bit of extra care here
and then I am going to repeat that up here. And these are just lines. I think choosing colours that you love and that you feel a real connection to make this page more meaningful. Because it's like a celebration, it's a celebration of all the things that make you you, all the things that are unique about you and things that you enjoy that go towards making up your kind of, I don't know, I suppose artistic style in a way. space over there. Oh, there's a little perfect little gap just there that I can use to add a few in and then just checking to see where I've got the gaps now. I didn't actually intend to fill in every space with a pattern but I seem to have which is you know okay I'm kind of liking that, it's very textural, it's quite fun. So I'm feeling like that's fairly finished, I just need to wait for the glaze pen to dry. And one of the ways I check to see if it's dry is I just press a tissue on top of the page, straight down and lift up, and if I'm pulling off any colour, it's not dry. <laughs> but that seems like it pretty much is dry. So I've got an eraser and I've got my finger and I know I've got a bit here that's already coming off so I'm just pulling it. You can see instantly those white lines and how they change how it looks and how it feels. So I do this bit with care. I tend to try and pull it off if I can because obviously you can use an eraser and it works beautifully. You could use a putty rubber. Um, and I think there are even special kind of blocks that you can use that help to pull it off. But if you are rubbing with an eraser, you run the risk of lifting some of the paint colour off. And I've never tried an eraser over the acrylic pens. So I feel that my finger is oops, a nice, sorry about that wobble, a nice safe way to get it to come off. So it's just gentle on the top until I've got some strands that I can then kind of pull up and I'm discarding those once I've got them onto my very messy desk. And then just check it with my finger kind of along the edges. And really this comes off very easily, it's not damaging the paper at all so I'm quite liking this Pabio. Um, I think it's called drawing gum rather than masking fluid. I'll have a quick look, I'll show you the bottle. So I filled up my um, <clears throat> mass pen with this. So, but it's really good. It's not not damaging the paper, and it's been on now for a good couple of days. And I have had masking fluid in the past that's just it's so sticky that it pulls the surface of the paper up. Um, and if I left it on for too long it just would leave a horrible mess. I mean that was quite a number of years ago. So I'm guessing masking fluid formula has improved since then. So you can actually feel when you kind of just take your finger across. I'm just using my finger just like going across and you can feel the bumps of the masking fluid and then you can just press a little bit harder to get them to start coming off. helps to make sure you don't miss any. And this is where you can see that those those more intense areas of colours are balanced out with the white. Uh, and where we've used the white Posca pen actually now doesn't look so 
so white and so stark because it's been balanced out by these the whiteness of the paper that's been revealed underneath so let's see where we are there's still a little bit to remove along here let's see if I can get those off first yep and then a bit here a little bit there and run my finger along there and see if I catch any more bits a little bit there it's not coming off very easily so I'm just going to use my rubber on it go and tap my rubber along this edge make sure I've got all the bits off and the same along this one and along this one and then along this one just because sometimes you get bits that kind of stick there and that is our page that has kind of it was built up from our fingerprints and there's a bit of a celebration of us I actually really want to put um, some kind of edge here at the moment or a border on so I'm going to follow that inclination I think um, perhaps by trying to do I just want it to be very narrow though so I'm trying to ponder how I'm going to get that really narrow kind of border on there that I'm imagining in my head if this was just a piece of paper then I would just use an ink pad just to go along the edges but I can't do that along this edge so I'm trying to ponder that out a little it just feels like it needs an edge I know what I shall do I'm going to grab my softest pencil which is an 8B um, Mars Lumograph pencil and if I go along the edge so it's nearly off the paper just like that right along the edge you can get a similar edging effect to that which you get with um, a stamp pad if I then get a paper blending stump and just rub that along that edge it will kind of give it a bit of a smudge and I can use my finger too to do that and I'm getting the kind of effect that I want so I'm going to do that on all my edges it's good to have a piece of paper underneath so what we're doing is just taking our pencil right along the edge and I'm actually drawing almost on this second piece and just letting the pencil touch and rub here like that and getting the smudgy tool and smudging it and maybe using my finger and then if I feel like I want that to be a bit stronger I can go back in and go a bit further up if I want to which I feel like I do so I'm going to do that you can see there there's the I'll turn this over hold on this side you can see there there's a the black line and then with the blending stump I don't want that to go too far in so I don't want to get smudges over the whole thing and then with my finger just to kind of soften it do the same up here I'm actually going to turn the book up all the way around because it's a lot easier to do it like this and use the Kind of, um, and work from the outside in so I'm not putting too much of the dark colour on there that's the first smudge and then the finger smudge and then I've just got to do down this edge so I am going to basically put my pencil in between oops went a bit further than I wanted to there I can probably with its pencil, I can lift that off with the rubber just carefully, and then blending stump, and then finger is much easier than a blending stump down this bit. And I'm just going to do that again and smudge it. And where I've gone a little bit too far, I'm just going to use the edge of my rubber to go down and to just lift the pencil off so it's not where I don't want it below that that feels pretty good to me now I'm really liking having a little bit of an edge to it um, and I'm feeling quite satisfied with the the feel of it and knowing what it's about and knowing that my fingerprint is kind of in there inspiring it and this one's all about me and 
all the things that I like about me, all the things that I um, think of as making me unique, all of the qualities that make up me, even the ones that, you know, you might not feel entirely are what everybody views as a good quality, like being stubborn. But I like that about me, and I'm okay with liking that about me. And so I've got those words in there, I've got patterns in there that I like, I've got colours that I like. And I've spent a lot of time being quite mindful and thinking about the things that make me me. And I've given some time and real attention to myself. And that's more what this page was about for me, was giving that time and attention to thinking about me and to getting in touch with what makes me me and what is special and unique and that I love about me and I appreciate about myself. So, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson and seeing this technique. I hope you have enjoyed the idea of a page that can be a sort of um, self-care, self-appreciation page. And I hope you have seen that I have approached this with that mindful attitude that I keep banging on about of being present with what's happening and observing with curiosity, being discerning and being really in the moment and following your inner intuition and nudges and just going with it and not being preoccupied with the outcome as much as the process and how you feel whilst you're doing it and taking that positive feeling and this has given me a really good feeling I feel really quite buoyant now about look at all these look at all the things that make me me and there are probably lots more that I could put in there is what I'm thinking now whereas when I started the page I was struggling a little bit with thinking of well what what is special about me what am I good at what you know those kind of questions that sometimes can pull us down so I hope you enjoyed that please do tag me in on anything you create I really love to see your creations I love to see what you've done with a lesson and it gives me an awful lot of joy and I do tremendous happy dances um, and I shall speak to you again soon <laughs>